What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Geekcom A6 Mini PC. And when I say Mini PC, I mean these A series from Geekcom are coming in at an absolutely tiny form factor, as you can see. I love this premium design that they've come up with. And in the past on the channel, we took a look at their A8, which is basically the same form factor. But the A8 is coming in with a higher price tag and a more powerful APU. That one actually has an AMD Ryzen 8000 series. This is coming in a bit lower in. This is right in their mid range. Not a bad little setup for what we've got here. And inside of the box, obviously you'll get the A6 mini PC mounting bracket. So we can mount this on the back of a monitor, under a desk, on the wall. And of course we've got our power supply. It's actually one of the newer small form factor power supplies coming in at 120 watts. When it comes to IO up front here, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Over on the left hand side, full size SD card reader. And around back, we've got our power input, full size USB 2.0 port, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, one more full size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, dual 2.0 HDMI ports. We also have one USB C 3.2 and a USB 4 port. When it comes to the overall specs of the Geekcom A6, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 6800H. This is a Zen 3 Plus CPU, 8 cores, 16 threads, and it'll clock up to 4.7 gigahertz. It's got the Radeon 680M iGPU built in with 12 compute units, and this will clock up to 2200 megahertz. The A6 will support up to 64 gigabytes of SODEM DDR5, but only up to 4800 megahertz, and I do think that's going to hold the iGPU back here. With a lot of the newer mini PCs in the market, we can do 5600. I've checked the BIOS and this does come with two 5600 sticks, but it can only run up to 4800. One M.2 2280 slot, and this came with a one terabyte drive pre-installed. We've also got another M.2 slot. It's actually a 2242, but it's SATA only. It's got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 built in. And out of the box, this is running Windows, but since it's an x86 CPU, you could definitely install Linux if you want to. Before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a look at the internals here, and it's really easy to get into this thing and upgrade the storage. Four screws on the bottom, we can remove that. And then from inside, we've actually got an M.2 cooler that also needs to be removed. Once we've got that out, you can see we've got dual channel SODIMM RAM and our 2280 M.2 that came pre-installed plus that free 2242 slot. But remember, it'll only support M.2 SATA drives. First thing I wanted to do was jump into the BIOS, give you a look at a few things, because from here, there are a couple things that I recommend changing once you get this machine. From the advanced section, if we move down, you can see we really don't have any very advanced settings. There are a few things here that'll come in really handy though, like our power mode. Out of the box, it's set to normal. We wanna go to performance. This can boost up to 64 watts. In balance, round 45. UMA frame buffer size, which is gonna be our VRAM is set to four gigs. And since this does have 32 gigs of RAM, I'm just gonna go up to eight here. Not gonna be an issue. I've also got a fan mode that we can adjust. Fix mode, manual mode. You can set this across the board to set up your own fan curve. And even in fixed mode at 100%, it's not as loud as I thought it would be. But we're gonna leave it in auto mode just to see what it does. We've also got security. You can disable secure boot. And uh, yeah, I kind of wish we did have that AMD CBS. We could access it using some third-party software, but uh, out of the box, this is what you're gonna get. So I do wanna leave it just like this. And that uh, AC loss control, this will allow it to come right back on if power goes out. So it'll basically automatically boot up once you plug this thing in. But for these tests, we're just gonna set our power mode to performance and up to eight gigs of VRAM. Save changes, reset, that'll bring us into Windows. Moving into Windows 11, just wanted to give you a look at a few things. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 6800H, 8 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5, and of course that 680M iGPU. And we did go into the BIOS and dedicate up to 8 gigs of VRAM here. Just to show you, in performance mode, right here, Ryzen 7 6800H, we'll go ahead and stress this out. Right down here, you'll see it jump up to 61, 64 watts, and then come on down to 54. So we've got a sustained across the board of 54 watts, which is more than enough for a little mini PC like this. Actually performs really well like it's sitting right now. 
And if you wanted to use this as an everyday desktop machine, this AMD APU does offer enough power for most everyday tasks. So uh, checking out a little bit of web browsing here, heading over to Geekcom's website. Pretty image heavy website and it will load everything up. It's gonna populate really quickly. So when it comes down to it, I mean, you wanna do some web browsing on this, email checking, document editing, even some photo or video editing, the 6800H can handle it quite well. Now I wanna take a look at some 4K video playback here from YouTube. We'll find a 4K demo. Make sure we're at 4K. Full screen with stats for nerds on screen. Up in the top left hand corner, you can see that we've got zero drop frames and the 6800H is gonna run through 4K video like a champ. Whether you wanna stream from a website like YouTube, Netflix, HBO, or you could do local storage and set this up as kind of a media streamer using external storage or internal storage. I mean, it's really up to you. But yeah, playing 4K, 60 FPS, HDR content with this chip shouldn't present an issue at all. So far, given the form factor, not a bad little system. I mean, it's really snappy here. But the next thing I wanted to do was take a look at a few benchmarks that I ran on this device. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, coming in with a 2071, multi, over 10,000, and this is not looking bad at all for the 6000 series APU. Next, we've got some GPU benchmarks using 3 Mark. Night Raid coming in with a 24,025, and I'll tell you, that 4800 MHz RAM is holding this iGPU back just a bit, because when I moved over to Time Spine, we're only at 2,642. And it's not horrible for an iGPU. Remember, we've got that 680M. It only clocks up to 2200, but I know for a fact that even if this RAM was running at 5600 megahertz, we would see a nice boost in performance here. But now it's time to move over to some real world gaming. The first one on the list is Doom Eternal. We're at 1080 low settings, and I do have the resolution scale set to 80% for this. For the most part, with the 6800H, I find that 900p is really gonna be a sweet spot for it. But I still wanted to test a couple games that could run pretty decently at 1080. And Doom Eternal is definitely one of those, but we did need to use a little bit of resolution scale here. But moving over to something like Forza Horizon 5, just an easier game to run on these iGPUs at medium 1080 with no FSR, no scaling whatsoever. We saw an average of 78 FPS and in some cases you'll see this jump over 100 FPS. So that's kind of how it goes with this one and you could get more out of it if you really wanted it. You could drop it down to 900p or add a little bit of FSR or even just take it down to low. But right now at 1080 medium, this game performs very well on this mini PC. Checking out Cyberpunk 2077, and even at low settings, this is one I had to drop down to 900p to get over 60. And in some cases, you actually might see it fall under. We're not using frame gen here, and we could enable it to see much better performance out of this mini PC. But I left it off here just to see what it would do. And like I mentioned, in some cases, you'll see it drop under 60. And uh, sometimes I actually saw it around 47 FPS. And finally, we've got Spider-Man 2 low settings, 900p with frame gen on. And in some cases, you can notice frame gen on the sides. This game has recently been updated. And I'll tell you, the newer updates have kind of ruined my experience on iGPUs. But again, I really think a lot of it has to do with that much slower 4800 megahertz RAM. I mean, they did put 5600 sticks in here, but there's no way to change it from the BIOS. Another thing I always like to monitor while testing these mini PCs is total system power consumption from the wall. And to do this, I use a kilowatt meter. It'll give us total power draw from the outlet. And at idle, this is around 10.5 watts. Playing a YouTube video, 14 watts. And while gaming, draws an average of 68 watts from the wall. So it's a relatively lower power consumption mini PC. And it's absolutely it's tiny, watching. but it's being held back by that 4800 megahertz RAM. And even with 56 installed, we'd gain a few frames here and there. Unfortunately, with all of the newer chips on the market with the 780M iGPU, 
This one is kind of lacking in graphics performance, but I mean, as an everyday PC, if you're not going to be doing any hardcore gaming on this, it'll definitely handle indie stuff. You can get your web browsing, email checking, document editing, photo editing done on this. Might be a good choice. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description. You can pick this up on Geekcom's website or Amazon. I'll leave both down below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, like maybe a different operating system, let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.